everybody welcome back to my channel i hope everybody is living their best life and if you're not please do something today to put you on the path of living your best life so today we're going to be making some blueberry and white chocolate muffins these were really good it had kind of like a cakey consistency but as the days went on it kind of got that like muffin feel you know but i highly recommend these muffins i am basing this off of somebody else's recipe which i'll leave in the link down below but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So for this recipe, you will need either a mixer or a bowl and a spatula, a muffin cup with muffin little containers, some baking powder, some ground cinnamon, some brown sugar, baking soda, some iodized salt, all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, some walnuts, a stick of butter or half a cup, you can use margarine if you don't have like a stick of butter and i use to salt it a little bag of some white chocolate chips i already have some some blueberries two eggs vanilla extract if you can find it but i only found vanilla flavor and some whole milk so let's get started In the description box down below, I'm going to leave measurements for this recipe as well as my reference for this recipe. I am going off of what I saw online or through my research through different articles and stuff on how to make them or different recipes in general because I am not a baker. <laughs> I'm a cook more than I'm a baker. But go ahead and mix together all of your dry ingredients first. So what you saw me add in there was some flour the white sugar, the brown sugar, the salt, the um, baking powder, and the baking soda. And then you just mix that all together as, and make sure that there's no big chunks, especially since you can see right there, those big chunks of brown sugar. Yeah, you want it all mixed together. And while you're waiting for that to mix or while you're mixing it, go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you got your like mixture all like powdery, go ahead and add your stick of butter or half a cup of margarine if that's all you have. And then from there, you just whisk that or just beat that together until it's completely smooth. And I'll just do a fast clip real quick to show you what the texture should look like. Bada boom! Right here, you can see that it's still like a powdery texture, but you can kind of see some of the creaminess start to form. When it's at this state, you can go ahead and add two of those eggs. I felt really professional because I cracked that egg with one hand, big up myself. I I was I felt really professional. <laughs> Just look at that. <laughs> Never in my life did I ever think of like just cracking an egg with one hand. Like I saw it on cooking shows. I saw it on movies and stuff, but I never thought I could do it. But bro, <laughs> try something new. And you just go ahead and whisk that together until you see it become creamy. And I think that took only like three minutes to do. I just let it whisk together. Or if you're doing this by hand, just go ahead and keep on stirring and keep on whipping that thing together for about three minutes. Then you can go in and add your milk slowly. As you can see, as I'm adding in the milk, it's kind of giving like a cakey like texture. If anybody um, on here has baked a cake before or seen somebody bake a cake, you know that when it comes to cakes, they have kind of like a liquidy texture before they go in the oven. And this is what this recipe kind of gave me. I had to substitute a lot of things from one, the original recipes that I found this from because I combined two different recipes. I combined one that was strictly blueberry muffin and one that was also blueberry muffin, but it was more reasonable. Like I didn't have all the stuff from the first one. But as you can see, it has like a really liquidy consistency and it's kind of like a cake batter. And that's why when it came out, it kind of felt like I was eating a cupcake as opposed to a muffin, but I still enjoyed it. 
after a few days of just letting it sit in the fridge and letting it sit out on the counter and stuff, it got that like muffin feel that I wanted, you know? And then you can just go ahead and add your blueberries in very, very slowly. And then from there, after you've done adding in your blueberries and allow that to mix together a little bit and just, I don't know, like come into form, you can go ahead and add in your white chocolate chips. This step is 100% optional, you really don't have to do this, but what I read online is that the topping is what makes like a muffin really good. Again, you can just have it as the regular bread, but I feel like this add, really add like a pizzazz to it. So what you're going to need is half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of chopped walnuts, and the bag that I got wasn't chopped enough for me, so I had to like bang it through and roll it out and then one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So if the walnuts or whatever nut you're using is too big as well, go ahead and get a regular plastic bag, like one of those little sandwich bags, open it up, pour your walnuts in, and then close it airtight or as airtight as you can possibly get it. Because when you're either rolling it out with a rolling pin if you have it, or banging it out with a wooden spoon, a metal spoon, whatever you have, you're going to want that to be airtight because you don't want powder flying everywhere. You don't want the bag to pop and all that stuff. And I'm just showing you what the texture should look like. Yes, I washed my hands and I was the only one that was eating this. So don't come for me, please. Anyway, go ahead and add your walnuts in and then mix all of that together in order to make your topping. for my favorite part the scooping of the little dough and applying the topping so for the dough you will want to add as much as you can to that cup don't allow it to overflow but it's okay if you are close to the rim like probably like a centimeter off from the very tip of the rim because I don't know like I know that some people they fill it up halfway but honestly it's going to be fine either way. So fill it up as much as you can. I did this probably three-fourths of the way of the cup. And I just filled that up all the way. And then when you're adding the topping, if you choose to add the topping, you just go ahead and fill up all that remaining space. So just add your topping until all that remaining space inside the muffin pin is completely filled up. And if you don't have a non-stick like muffin pan, I would recommend either spraying it down with some nonstick oil and not the part where the muffin cups go down, but around the edges and around the crust. So then as your muffins begin to rise and the topping begins to spill over a little bit, it won't burn, you know? So just add a little bit of nonstick spray or a, little, a very tiny layer of oil so then when you're cleaning it up later, it's not too much of a hassle. So I allowed these to cook in the oven at 425 for a little over 20 minutes and the results were bomb. And here is the muffin, the end result. And guys, this most definitely passed the shoulder bop test. It was delicious. I swear. I really hope that you guys tried this recipe and if you do, please feel free to tell me in the comments or even on my Instagram how it worked out for you. I found these absolutely delicious and I really think that a lot of y'all will too. And with that being said, I hope everybody lives their best life. Peace, love, and light to you all.